There goes Roy, protector of the ovine flock from nasty crows with his air rifle, because we're not licensed for anything stronger. There is some shenanigans going on in this field. Curiouser and curiouser. Feed this fed. Feed this fed. <laughs> I'll feed this shed. Guess who's back, 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 back again. They're free. They're allowed out. So they are making up for lost time by absolutely terrorising the farmyard, throwing straw everywhere where we put a small bale to feed to some calves. They scrat it out. It's what they're incredibly good at. So me and Wynne have just come down the river to show you a little bit of something something. Ready? <laughs> you don't be... So I don't take the dog on the river bank and this is why. How incredible is this? I've got an actual fly in my eye, like not even a little one. Oh nice, there it is. I'm sure its legs are still in there. Right, let me take you down here. This here is the River Eden. Um, it's pretty, isn't it? I'll put a tiny clip in of what it looks like in your living room. No joke. Nobody expected it. We were told to expect a foot of water um, and it, it's well and truly gone over the foot. So you've just got to get on with it it's one of those things isn't it but it's going to be hard work it's another mess to clean up when we've already done it once and in such a short space of time now you may or you may not have seen if you're farming you will have seen if you're not farming you may not a man named johnny in herefordshire basically has gone to prison for 12 months the judicial system would probably say that he's going for six months because he'll appeal etc etc and has had huge fines for altering, cleaning out the river. Now, <laughs> I I sit, honestly, I sit on the fence on this one and I don't mind saying so. We are victims of flooding home-wise. Our houses and businesses have been flooding and we are also farmers on this river. So it's a little bit of a, you know, you sit in between. I would not alter this river, personally. I just, you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't touch it. You wouldn't dare do it. You've not got permission. Therefore, it is wrong. The end. However, if that town over there, there isn't a town over there, but if that town over there, say Kirby Thor, which is here, if that town flooded really badly and I had not just had grass in this field here and had invested like thousands and thousands and thousands, probably hundreds of thousands knowing the size of the farm over the years and it kept getting flooded and the environment agency were doing nothing about it. At what point do you snap and do something about it? So river wise, this that I am stood on here moves. Um, depending on what time of year you come down, loads of different reasons how heavy flooding's been how fast the river's been this island that i am stood on right now is just gravelly stones and it moves it it disappears sometimes um it, it's been over there it's been over here it, it's a constant changing thing however it is getting bigger like it, it is it's getting bigger it used to be an island in the middle and look at it now there's no island left Everybody always said in Appleby when we flooded on a personal, you know, home level. I'm just watching these birds, they're incredible. Do you want to see? Now, in the local town, 
it is the general consensus, I don't know whether this is 100% true, that they will not dredge the rivers because of crayfish, not the big bad wolf crayfish, the very native, slightly endangered crayfish, which we have loads of, like by the way. To be fair, if I look for long enough, I'll probably find a live one for you. No. No. Roy's normally like, what have you done since I was away? Well, I paddled in a river and I looked for crayfish to show people. It is pretty though, isn't it? Utterly devastating when it's in your living room, I can I can tell you. Um, so yeah, I think we removed a cam, like a, a hump in the field that kind of, it was designed years ago to help the river stay on a certain course when it flooded. Um, we removed it, we got rid of it, and we just let it do what it wants on our field. But um, I think I might feel differently. Sorry, I'm literally like, I've got things in my eyes. It's ridiculous. I honestly think I might feel differently if we'd invested thousands and thousands and thousands. Don't get me wrong, we've invested enough in this. But if it was a crop and it was underwater for four months at a time, which is what's happening down there, let's not pretend that it's just a flash flood like ours and it washes away. No, they're underwater for four months at a time. It's a completely different ball game. The Environment Agency are doing very little to alleviate that situation and you end up with like, just absolutely devastating mass flooding. Like, this is a live wind, man. This, this is a live. Like the river is ever moving, changing. When it floods, it does gouge out mass chunks of bank and it does look pretty devastating. But do you know what? Stuff grows, like unbelievably stuff grows. But on a separate, it's, it's, two, it's two separate things, isn't it really? Yes, the man was in the wrong. He had been told no, and the man was in the wrong. He knew he was in the wrong and he was asked to stop and he didn't. So that's one thing there. So in the media, these are the images that are being shown to you. They are probably two years old. Um, lots of muddy, vast banks that looks very dramatic. Um, and this is the river now. So yes, obviously you can see there are some trees missing off the riverbank, but if I'd have turned around in my video and shown you right next to me, there was a big willow tree lying. Um, and if you look in this next image, this is what he was trying to dig out. Can you see all that silt and stuff? So it isn't as dramatic as what the media are making out. But the deeper reasoning behind doing what he did um, and the deeper impacts, yes, for a short-term pain, people will see a long-term gain nature will recover that's what it does it's what it's good at i don't believe that he went about it in the right way at all any sane person would tell you that that was a very bad idea especially when told not to good old Therese Coffey has come out and obviously um, clapped her hands in glee that somebody has paid the penance for such a heinous act. <laughs> Hypocrite. Um, this is the same woman, um, as I read Andrew Ward's tweet the other day, who um, was one of the people who voted for sewage to be allowed in the rivers. Clap. Clap. Apparently, I asked somebody's opinion this morning who's in the know and the town has not flooded since. So that's an interesting piece of information. Now, as a town that does flood and a farmer with farmland on the same river that floods the town, we have been calling for the river to be dredged for years. There's been Facebook petitions. Everyone's always been talking about it. And the answer has been no because of the crayfish. Crayfish rule. Don't get me wrong, I love a good crayfish. Like, there's loads here and I love seeing them and I think they're magical, but at the expense of people's businesses and homes and ruining people's livelihoods. Like, if you go into the local town, I'm not being funny, if you say the Environment Agency, people's heckles go up. It's not a good feeling. Yeah, we have a picture. I'll dig it out for you now. I'll get it. Of Victorian times, for instance, you know, hundreds of years ago, the... Uh, a cottage that Roy's dad 
owns in Appleby and a house and it shows the, the depth of the river compared to the obvious the river bank and the road and then if you go and compare it to now now their argument um, I seem to remember from Storm Desmond was if you make a deeper channel the river will just flow faster and therefore it will be more vicious and when it gets to for instance Carlisle down there it will be more vicious when it gets to Carlisle and it'll flood Carlisle faster. Years ago farmers used to go in the river and dig stone out um, for building that's just what happened and it's you're not allowed to do that anymore it's completely illegal and you will be in big big trouble if you do something like that. It's funny you you have this land I think times are changing we are not the landed gentry anymore that own land and it's not yours to do with what you want to you are very much governed by a higher power at all times that riverbank there we cannot do any it's yours all the way along there um, but we can't do anything to it because it's illegal. You are very much governed. I think you just took a custodian of the countryside now. And I like that. I like that you're just improving it and bettering it for future generations. You know, whether it be your children or somebody else's. Just leave it in a better state than what you found it. Try and improve it. Do your little bit. Whether or not clearing a river out um, in a couple of years time will be seen as such a bad thing. Times change. Um, views from the government certainly change year on year. I remember being told and having, you know, a biomass boiler put in. It's the best thing since sliced bread, according to the government. Buy a diesel car, said the government. <laughs> Funny how the tables turn and now a diesel car is the worst thing in the world and um, biomass is also the worst thing in the world, ruining the environment. You know, in the 80s, the government came along and told everyone to rip all the hedges and trees out and make way for food production. And now the farmers are the arseholes that ripped all the hedges out. They were told to do it. They were probably given money to do it at the time. Of course, you're going to do what you're told, especially if there's financial, you know, incentives there. So from the point of view of the person who lives in the town, from where that man lives, I guarantee they were thinking that it was a marvellous idea. Um, it has saved them a lot of hardship, a lot of expense, a lot of insurance claims, a lot of stress. And I think that they will be thinking that he is an absolute saviour. From the point of view of environmentalists who are thinking of nobody other than the wildlife in the river or the flora and fauna around the area, um, they will be thinking it is the worst crime, you know, and he needs to be hanged for it. So in Pickering... Um, they did a thing, it was funny because it was on the one show when me and Rowan rented accommodation because our house had flooded. Um, they did slow leaky dams, they called it, I've just Googled it now, um, and a massive catchment reservoir. And basically it slowed the flow from the uplands um, down into villages. It's very circumstantial and I think it's a lot more complicated than what the headlines would have you believe, but especially it's not really comparable to our sort of flooding, but it's flooding all the same and it's a river all the same and the rules are still the same, despite it being a completely different scenario. So our flooding, for instance, um, we get a lot of rainfall or defrosting snow, a period of, you know, bad weather um, where the ground is saturated. It runs straight off the top and into the rivers. It hits the, the slopes literally you can see them and it runs straight off the top of those i mean you can imagine when you've got a big building like we have the amount of rain that comes off it when it rains heavy it's unbelievable the amount of water that a big roof can catch imagine being a fell or a you know a hill somewhere so the water ran off and it was collected in slow leaky dams to slow it down in the rivers and then they put a huge reservoir in to catch the water and they were saved from flooding whilst we flooded and they said that the um 2005 flood was a once in a lifetime height of water i have lived through three of them at that height of water and several smaller ones that are knee height you know still devastating all the same all your furniture still got to be thrown out but yeah those once in a lifetime over the head height dangerous life-threatening floods i have lived through three of them and they were once in a lifetime I don't know whether the amount of rainfall is increasing 
or is it just the amount of buildings that we're building and tarmac that we are laying um, that is making runoff so much easier into the rivers? I think this is a national problem on so many levels that does need addressing and it's a shame it's taken something like this to bring it to the front again. Yeah, loads of people have weighed in on this, whether it be on YouTube videos, Twitter, Instagram, anything you can think of, probably Facebook as well, even though I don't use it. We obviously have had issues with rivers flooding, which makes you look into it a little more deeply than the headlines would have you uh, look into it. I think the headlines have made it a very much a blanket, you know, problem with this fella and they've portrayed him in quite a bad light. The baddie's gone to jail, do you know what I mean? Um, it's just designed to stir up division and it, and it has done its bloody work. It always does, doesn't it? They're very clever. But I think the fact remains that the man was told not to. It is illegal and therefore he must have been happy to accept the consequence of his actions to carry on after being told to stop. Ready? Yep. Got some strawberries from Spain. Yeah, Spain, because um, British growers of strawberries cannot afford to heat the greenhouses. Cool. That's not cool. So I'm just at Roy's mum and dad's house. And this here, these are Roy's dad's houses here. And they don't look like that anymore and there's houses in front, etc. But look at the depth, excuse my farm fingernails, look at the depth of the river. Now I'm going to go past in a minute and I will show you from, actually, do you know what? I'll drive around and I'll stand here. I'll take this, I'll take this. So you know the other day when the, um, the crusher broke and I said it let a load through? Look at this. So this is why we crush the grains because the cows they can't process it unless it's crushed because their stomachs will not break through that little tough shell so it comes out whole and just passes right through so there was no point in that animal eating this grain and that's why we crush it and crack that hard little shell and then it releases what's inside and then they can process it so i'm taking you now to show you where this picture is taken to show you the difference in the river levels me and anna are wandering down here feeling rather stupid while there's people walking towards us. Um, before the Environment Agency, there was the National Rivers Authority. Um, you might remember the logo, it looked a bit like a washing machine. So the National Rivers Authority was um, responsible for things like sewage, reservoirs, drinking water, anything water related. It was then a lot of stuff was privatised and sold off and it then turned into the Environment Agency, which, which is primary um, use is to protect and enhance the environment and it seems that's it regardless of food production and people's homes and livelihoods that there is exactly that there obviously there's been a house built here but you can just see there's that white house is that one there and the ones next to it are that one over there so I'm literally just illustrating for you the drop in the river from there to there and from there to there. This is a lot deeper and it's literally just a build up of stuff. You can particularly see it around um, the arches of the bridge. If you look at old photographs, you can see more of the footing of the arches than you can now. Um, like nobody looks after these rivers anymore. You know, there's children down there playing. My children are down here playing. That there is the remains of an old gas pipe from when the gas works were up there. There's the other half of the gas pipe. Nobody is looking after the river. It's an old, an old gas pipe. Like in days gone by, people used to, they tried to protect um, the riverbanks from erosion and stuff like that. And as you can see, 
like historic work is just now falling into the river and no one's doing anything about it. Just wood? Well, it's ridiculous. So you've got attempts to repair a riverbank. There's gabion baskets over there, little ones. There's um, pieces of wood timber here. That's They try to replace it using that. And then here we've got more gabion baskets with concrete on the top. And then over here we've got rock armour, um, literally just big boulders put in there. So is this how we solve the problem of rivers? Do we just build everything up a height? Um, here is the cricket pavilion on stilts. There is the little storeroom on stilts. They're building the co-op uh, to put it on stilts. This is the size of the wall that we have to build to protect. Uh, on the other side of this there is the doctor's surgery and the local swimming pool. And this is the size of the wall that they have to build completely impenetrable by water. And then if anything does come over, um, it gets pumped out by the fire brigade and in uh, extreme cases, the army gets called in. Ah, uh, um, in school? Yeah? Yes, we did. Yeah, so him. But the threat from the river is nothing compared to those evil farmers who are now on a level with sewage runoff. What? Thanks. And the irony of them actually labeling a threat to the river as being neglect is, <laughs> is not lost on me. I think this is a conversation that needed having and while I'm aware it isn't my usual happy, jolly, silly video, I think it's a very important thing to talk about. Yeah. Um, I am so sorry if this video was boring to you. Um, if it was, do me a favour and think of somebody that might find it interesting and send it to them. That would help me out immensely because I already know this is going to completely bomb. But I just think it's something, I know it's serious and I know it goes against everything I stand for being serious and being taken seriously. Yeah, it's something that we've always talked about and never really done anything about. Do you know what I mean? It's it's something that we always feel is out of our hands. And I think that is the main problem. Us as farmers and as, you know, people who live on riverbanks, we feel that all of this is out of our hands and there's nothing we can do to help or make change. And I find that really sad because, you know, we the people should be able to make a change. So, yeah, sorry if you found it boring, but I hope you didn't. I really do. Um, so don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow when normal, everyday farming content will resume. Promise.